The split amount test is again a pretty straightforward operator to understand. In some ways it's akin to the send out test, as it simply sends particles onto a new event, with no real criteria to test against. In this case though, instead of all or none of the particles being sent, you can choose a proportion of them via three different options. The final refinement with this test is that the last option you can also choose to apply its effect to particles coming from different sources from within the flow. Let's have a look at the options. The first option, which you can see here, is fraction of particles. And with this option, you simply choose the percentage of particles that you want to be sent on to the next event via the ratio parameter. I.e., with 50%, which you can see we're using here, half of the particles will stay in the event, whilst the other half are sent onwards. Of course, which particles are assigned to which group is randomly determined, so bear this in mind. So we'll go back to the beginning, press play, and you'll see that 50% of the particles are indeed sent on to the next event, where you can see they're actually changed to a yellow uh, sphere, and you can see that they're actually set to spin. Now, if I go back to the beginning again and change this value to say 10%, you should see that that actually takes place. So only 10% of our particles are being sent onwards now. So that's a pretty easy option to understand. Let's have a look at the next option, which is every ninth particle, or every ninth whatever particle, whichever way you want to say it. With this option, the test sends out every nth particle to the next event. So if you set the n value to 1, all particles will go to the next event. With an n value of 2, every second particle will go to the next event. And with every third and with 3, every third particle will go, and so on. As you can see, in our case, I've set it to 5, which means every fifth particle will be sent to the event, which is actually the same as actually setting this up here to, t to 20%. So now if I press play, this, as you sh should see, is actually, there you go, 20% of our particles are actually being sent on to the next event. If I go back to the beginning, set it to 1, press play, there you go, you can see all of the particles have been sent to the next event. So using every ninth particle and using a value of 1 is actually going to uh, work in exactly the same way as send out, basically. So you've got those options there. The next option is first n particles. And we'll just rewind back to the beginning and press play again to see how that works. There we go. So you can see it's actually set up at the moment using first n particles and the n number is 10. So in other words, it's going to send the first 10 particles that come into the event onto the next event. And you can see there are those 10 particles. They're the first one that actually came in. If we set it to, let's say, uh, 20, or let's say 30, you can see our flow recalculates. And there you go. You can see the first 30 particles have been sent onto the next event. Very easy to understand. I'll just put that back to 10 again. You can actually reverse that option and you can say let's send um, only uh, particles after the first 10 particles. So now you should see that the first 10 particles remain red and all the other particles become yellow. And will actually spin. So there you go, that works exactly as you would expect. Now let's have a look at per emission source, which you can see is the tick box here. As you can see in our example, I've actually merged two particle sources into the event with a split amount test. With this option active, the first n number of particles, or particles after n, first split option is applied separately to each particle stream coming into the test. So, if you look at our example, you can see that we have 50 particles coming from source A, and another 50 particles coming from source B. When this option is not active, you can see that the first 10 particles are split off to the next event. However, when this option is ticked, the first 10 particles from each stream is split off, so we end up with 20 particles being sent on to the next event. So obviously, if you have more than two sources, for every source that you add flowing into that particular event, you will be sending off another 10. So let's actually see that in action now. We'll set it to first n particles. There you go, you can actually see... Uh, Actually, let's probably just play it, because sometimes with software display mode, you don't get a fresh display. There you go. So now you can see the first n number of particles, which is set to 10, they're being sent on to the next event. If we say per mission source, it'll recalculate, and now you can see it's actually 20. So that works exactly the way that we just described. 
This test is often used in conjunction with a spawn test. For example, you can have a spawn test produce two new particles. The first particle is split off and will go on to form the basis of a ring wave via further spawns and so on. And the second particle remains and then goes on to form the basis of a spark explosion. In this way, by splitting and using spawn tests, you can build very complex explosions with multiple elements just from one initial seed particle, which pretty much typifies the power of workflow within particle flow. So that's it for the split amount test. Let's go on to the next test, which is actually related, as you can tell by the name, and that's actually the split selected test.